Welcome back to the Obsession Engineering Garage. Regular viewers may notice I've had a subtle haircut, but we don't need to go into too much detail on that. You will also notice on the bench there are lots of things covered in bubble wrap. And all these things, a couple of days ago, were a complete S1000RR engine that a friend of mine wanted refreshing. So I decided at the time that I'd make some videos about it, and I did an introduction in which I went off rambling like an idiot. So I've decided to redo the introduction. In the first instalment, I am going to be showing you how to check valve clearances, checking the cam timing in the BMW engine, and doing a leak down test. I'm then going to proceed over the next few videos to take the engine apart, measure all the clearances, decide what needs to be changed in the engine, and then I will start putting it back together and while I'm putting it back together I will try and explain how things work, why things are designed as they are, and try and give you a reasonable understanding of what's inside the engine. So sit back, relax, and try not to fall asleep. It's a fairly easy way to start to do valve clearances. We're going to take these six screws out and then take the rocker cover off and then I'm also going to go down the hole down there with a long reach socket and I'm going to take the spark plugs out because obviously we need to turn the engine over to do the clearances and it's a lot easier with the spark plugs out. I've got the rocker cover off now, the spark plugs out and the little timing cover off so I can turn the engine over. So this is one of the plugs I've taken out, the colour's really nice on it, condition looks good. The colour just gives you a basic idea if you're a million mile off on fueling. But that's, you know, a discussion for another day about plug chopping and stuff that of modern four strokes is pretty irrelevant. Right, what I can do now is, I'll swap the car into my other hand, obviously if I turn the engine over with this, I'm turning the crankshaft and the cams are turning. So for example, you can see this one, the lobe is at the top, which means the off-ramp will be at the bottom, or in fact the base circle will be at the bottom, down by this rocker arm, so we can put a feeler gauge in there now and measure the clearance. So, to measure the clearance underneath this, what we're going to do is I've got a feeler gauge, and I'm going to slide that in there, and that slides in quite nice and easily. So then, I get the next size up, Try the same thing again. Look, doesn't go in. Doesn't go in at all. So I know that the clearance is bigger than this, which is 0.2 of a millimetre, but smaller than that. So probably 0.22. Which is handy because the clearance allowance on exhaust cams on a BMW is 0.2 to 0.26 millimetres. Inlet is 0.14 to 0 0.2. So I shall go through, turn the engine round, and one by one, or in fact two by two, do all of these clearances, make sure they're all in spec. That's it, I've checked all the valve clearances now, and I've written them down on my piece of paper, 4321 on the cylinders, because number one is there, so it goes along, got to write it all in order. So, why are valve clearances important? Well, if we look down here, I will show you as we rotate the engine you can see that the cam pushes the valve down via a rocker arm and that obviously opens the valve and lets the fuel and air mixture in and then it closes the valve again to seal everything up. Now if the valve clearance is zero when we're at this point and the valve is meant to be closed thus sealing the cylinder up it won't be closed it'll be allowing uh, like fuel and air mixture to come back out of the cylinder, which is not a good thing. If the clearance is too big, then the cam doesn't get full opening on the valve and you can't get as much flu uh, charge into the cylinder because your valve time area, well, your valve isn't open as long. So there you have the basics of it. Your valve clearances need to be correct for emissions and for power. The next thing I'm going to do is check that the cam timing is correct. This designates when the valves are open in relationship to where the piston is in the bore. So obviously when the piston's at the top, you want all the valves closed, and obviously as the piston goes down, the valves need to open to let the fuel in or let the fuel out or whatever. 
I will explain probably that in greater detail later, but you've had enough of the sirens for today. So, on these BMW engines, there's two marks in these gears down here, and you line those up, and that allows you to put this special tool through this hole in the crankcase, and it locks the crank in position. You then take this natty little tool, and you slide that onto the end of the cams, and you can see it locks into these flats on the cams. This is the proper BMW tool for this. Slide in, and I now know this cam timing is set perfectly to factory standard. Because it's a super stock engine, we're not changing the cam timing in it, because that will be against the rules. So, that's easy. I know the valve clearances are good, the cam timing's good. It's a good start to an engine strip. Next bit, I will do a leak down test. This is a leak down tester. Now what we're going to do with this is, we have this airline going into the cylinder, which is at top dead centre. So all the valves are closed, we can tell by the clam lobes that the valves are closed. The cylinder is at top dead centre, so what we're going to do is, we're going to pressurise the cylinder. Now, the first gauge tells me how much air we're putting into the cylinder, and the second gauge tells me the pressure inside the cylinder. So, the difference between the two is how much the cylinder is leaking. So you can get potentially leakage through piston rings, uh, valve seats, even if the head gasket's leaking or there's a crack in a bore, you can tell it to an extent with a leak down tester. Much better than a compression tester because it actually tells you what's leaking. So, before we take an engine apart, we'll leak down test it, and that tells me realistically whether I need to change the piston rings in it or not, and whether the valves leak or not. Because I need both hands to uh, operate this equipment, I shall uh, set you up over there. So, I've got no pressure yet, so what I shall do is wind the regulator in, and we'll see the pressures going up in both cylinders. And as we go up, We'll see we're looking pretty good so far. 60 psi, 70, 80, 90 psi. Right, that's 100 psi going in and 100 psi in the cylinder. So if we come a little bit closer, you can see that hopefully. 100 psi going in, 100 psi in the cylinder. So, as accurate as the gauge is, that is less than 1% cylinder leakage, which is absolutely brilliant. This engine has not done a lot of mileage, and you can tell. I can hear an ever so slight tss. And that's that maybe, maybe half a percent, and it's just leaking past the piston rings. Piston rings will never actually seal perfectly. Not with 100 psi there. So, I'd always expect a tiny little bit of that, but at the less than 1 psi leakage we've got, that is absolutely brilliant. So I know I don't need to change the piston rings. On cylinder number 2, you can see we've got quite a lot of difference between the ingoing air and the outgoing air, and... Don't know whether you can hear that, we're hissing through the inlet valve. So, I know that inlet valve is leaking ever so slightly. Could be a little bit of dirt on it, could it could be a little nick on the seat. So, I now know that when we get the engine apart, I need to take the valves out of it and check the valve seats. So now I already know, before we take much of it apart, the valve clearances are good, so that probably means the valves are probably in good condition. We've not bent anything, there's no particular wear on anything. Uh, the cam timing is good, so the cam chain and bits are probably absolutely fine. But we have got a little bit of leakage past the inlet valve seats, so that is worth checking. Other than that, the piston rings look to be in good condition. So, I now know when I take it apart what I do and don't need to really pay it much attention to. So, I'm going to carry on and strip some bits off. Why don't you go and uh, have a little bit of a break and join me next time?